Let's talk for a minute about moment of inertia. Maybe a little bit of a confusing term for some of you, but I'm going to make clear what it is and why it matters. If you'll notice the putter face here, look at that sweet spot. Can you imagine how many times that the owner of that putter had to strike the ball perfectly with the sweet spot of the putter to get that wear pattern? By the way, this putter is Tiger Woods, Scotty Cameron, Newport 2, custom made for him. He's used this exact putter to win 14 of his 15 majors. The thing is, Tiger Woods always hits the putter on the sweet spot. You and I don't. And when you don't hit the ball perfectly on the sweet spot of the putter, two very bad things happen. One is that your putter face twists offline. You see, when you make a putting stroke, the face of the putter, the ball is on the face of the putter for about one half of one tenth of a second. And during that time, if you've hit it a little bit on the toe or a little bit on the heel, then the putter face twists that way. And because of that, it rolls offline, the set either to the right or the left, depending on whether you've hit the toe or the heel. The second bad thing that happens is because you miss the sweet spot, your distance comes up short, usually on a 10 foot putt, about two foot, sometimes a little more, a little less, but that's a significant miss. And so moment of inertia is a measurement that putting engineers have come up with that measures how much your putter face resists twisting offline. They measure it in terms of kilograms meter squared. I'll be the first to tell you, I don't understand all the science and engineering behind moment of inertia and kilograms meter squared, but here's what I do know for certain. The higher the moment of inertia, the more your putter face resists twisting offline. And if you're like me and you don't always hit the ball exactly perfectly in the sweet spot, you want a putter face that resists twisting offline, so a little higher moment of inertia is good for you. If you'll take, for instance, this old-fashioned bullseye putter. 35, 40 years ago, everybody used these, and it's a nice putter. It hits the ball and rolls it in the hole, but its measurement in terms of moment of inertia, resistance to twisting offline, is a little bit less than 2,000, somewhere in the range of 1,800, depending on the putter. Well, a guy named Karsten Solheim with Ping came along, and he came up with what we call the Ping Answer style putter. Now, what Solheim realized is that, that if you move the weight of the putter out here to the toe and to the heel or to the perimeter, it raises the moment of inertia of the putter. And so if you don't hit it perfectly on the sweet spot, you miss it here a little bit, or you miss it here a little bit, the putter has greater resistance, which means it's more likely to stay true to your line. You're more likely to make the putt. Remember the old bullseye style putters? Bullseye style putters, their moment of inertia is measured at around 1800 or so. Any of the ping answer style putters, including the putters that are commonly made and used today, like your brand new, fresh Scotty Cameron Newport 2s and other, any of the ping answer style blade putters, their moment of inertia is somewhere around 42 to 4,500. Contrast that with my Cure RX-5 putter. This putter has 18 thousand as its measurement for moment of inertia or resistance to twisting. And that's accomplished by what Karsten Solheim called perimeter rating, I weighting. I don't know if you can tell, but they've taken the weight out of the center here on the cure and moved it to the perimeter, which means this putter has almost five times, more than four and a half times the resistance to twisting of most of your blade style putters. 
Another interesting thing that they've done is they've moved the weight not only to the perimeter, but moved it back further behind the putter face. The advantage of that is it lowers the center of gravity for, for the putter, which resolves the other issue when you don't hit it in the sweet spot, and that's the distance. So this putter will roll the same amount of distance and more on line if you hit it on the toe, all the way extremely on the toe, or extremely on the heel. That's what moment of inertia does for you. Now listen. let me also say that in the SAM putt lab, they tested all kinds of golfers from PGA Tour professionals down to amateur golfers, and they documented and discovered that using a putter with a higher moment of inertia would make an improvement of about half a stroke around for the average PGA player. And you go, yeah, what's half a stroke around? That's no big deal. Well, over a four day tournament, that's two strokes. That's oftentimes the difference in making the cut or not making the cut in finishing first or finishing 10th. In other words, half a stroke around to a PGA pro is worth millions of potentially millions of dollars a year. By the way, they also discovered that for the average amateur like you and me, it makes as much difference as two strokes around. That's a huge difference. Now listen, I'm not saying that you ought to run out and buy a new putter with a higher moment of inertia. What I am saying is if you sometimes miss hit your putt, or if you regularly miss hit your putt and miss the sweet spot, it might be helpful for you to look into a mallet style putter or a putter that has a higher moment of inertia and a lower center of gravity because the ball stays on line more and your distance roll is more consistent. It helps you make more putts. I know some of you are big into labels and brands well, I have great news for you. Scotty Cameron makes putters with a higher moment of inertia and a lower center of gravity. PXG makes putters with a higher moment of inertia and a lower center of gravity. So do Adel, Adel, however you want to pronounce that, Batonardi, Odyssey, TaylorMade, everybody does that. If you struggle with always hitting the sweet spot, if your distance control is difficult and you're routinely offline, you might consider playing with or trying a putter with a higher moment of inertia. See how that works out for you. Put your comments in the section below. What do you think about moment of inertia? Is it really that important in a putter? Does it matter to you? Or are you that guy that we should all be jealous of who always hits the sweet spot like the PGA professionals?